Black women had an overwhelming impact on the last election, but we're still struggling for equal representation in government. Currently, of the 435 representatives in the House, only 24 are black women, and not a single one of them is in a leadership position. And after Kamala Harris made history as vice president, that left zero women in, black women in the Senate. Increased diversity among lawmakers can mean more inclusive and comprehensive policy decisions, especially in a pandemic that has disproportionately impacted women, black and brown people. As I, Representative Ayanna Presley says, the people closest to the pain should be closest to the power. But that's not just for Congress. The need for representation is important at all levels of government. In our nation's entire history, the whole dang thing, a black woman has never, ever, ever been elected governor of a state. That could change this year, though. Jennifer McClellan and Jennifer Carol Foy are two black women running for governor of Virginia which is where I am and have been the entire pandemic. And Jennifer Carol Foy joins me now. Jennifer, I am so happy to see you and to have you here. Uh, let's start with uh, talking about why diverse representation is so important. So diverse representation is important. And thank you for having me here, Zelina. It's an honor and privilege to be here with you this evening. It's important because we understand the policies that most impact our communities, especially marginalized communities, API, Black communities, millennials, so many people who have been ignored, neglected, and left behind. And so we need to have a seat at the table, but not just a seat. We need to shake it up. It's not enough to have policies written for black women, we need to have policies written by black women. And so that's the difference. In terms of representation, um, as I mentioned, I'm here in Virginia, and Terry McAuliffe, a uh, former Democratic, Democratic governor here in Virginia, he's running again. So here uh, we have six year terms, uh, and I guess he wanted to do it again. Um, do you feel like he's getting in the way though? Because you're making history, and if you win, you would be the first black woman governor in the entire history of the United States, and he's already had this job. What's your reaction to the fact that he jumped into this race after two black women were already in it? So there are a lot of congratulations going around for black women helping to save our democracy, for standing up for so many years and agitating and making forward progress, but our work is yet to be done. We have yet to have a black woman lead this nation, although we're so excited to have the first black vice president and South Asian vice president and Kamala Harris. And we have never had a black woman lead any state in this nation, in our nation's history. And so we're ready to change that. It's not enough to ask us for our support and our vote, but you need to be there when we're ready to lead. And so we're ready to shake up the status quo and change politics as usual. We are moving forward and not back. And that's why this campaign is so important. As a former public defender, foster mom, and one of the first women to ever graduate from Virginia Military Institute, one of the top military colleges in this country, Virginians are hungry for a leader who understands the challenges they face, who inspire them, and someone who they see themselves in. And that's why we will be successful and they'll vote for a Jennifer Carroll Foy administration. If you win, um, you said you recently that you're going to have an all pro-choice cabinet, which is an announcement I have never seen before um, by any candidate running. Why is that so important and how will having a pro-choice cabinet change how your potential administration would govern? So that's right. To the best of my knowledge, um, I am the first gubernatorial candidate in the nation to proclaim that I will appoint an all pro-choice cabinet once I am elected governor here in Virginia. Because I will be that firewall protecting people's access to abortion and reproductive health care. Because it is a war on women. It's an outright assault on people when you're talking about abortion and reproductive health care. And so I instantly understand the intersectionality between reproductive justice and freedom. So my education secretary will ensure that there's comprehensive evidence-based and age-appropriate sex education that happens in our classrooms. Um, my secretary for public safety will ensure that incarcerated people are receiving 
neonatal care and reproductive health uh, care. And then when you have, talk even about the agricultural secretary, um, one of the core tenets of reproductive justice is ensuring that people who do decide to start a family have access to clean air and clean water. So it's all interrelated and it's all important. Absolutely. In terms of uh, some recent news, uh, you're opposed to the death penalty, and today Virginia actually voted to end it. What's your reaction to that finally happening, and why were you against the death penalty before today? So, Zerlina, let's be very clear. Um, people who look like you and I are more likely uh, to be charged and convicted in certain crimes, and we're most likely, especially if you're a black male, to be sentenced to death. Um, and so there's racial bias there, there's economic bias there, because if you don't have money to pay for a retained attorney, you're more likely to receive the death penalty. And if you have an, a mental health issue, it's even you know, more exacerbated, and the numbers are more inflated. And so as the first public defender ever elected to the Virginia General Assembly, um, I am in the courtroom almost every single day fighting for people's constitutional rights to ensure fairness and equity happens in the courtroom. And unfortunately, it doesn't always happen that way. And so there's a lot of bias that's mm -hmm. there. There's a lot of injustice that we're fighting for, uh, fighting against. And so again, we have to make sure that we have people who understand uh, the challenges that families are facing. And that's why this uh, campaign, again, is so important, because we're going to move forward on so many issues. So some people say that they're against the death penalty, but their vote their record and the things that they've done don't support it. Well, you can be sure that that will happen because even if it's not successful now as governor, I will have an executive order to put a moratorium on the death penalty and I will repeal the death penalty here in Virginia. And so for people who are excited about this movement that we're creating in Virginia right now, please go to jennifercarolfoy.com and support and donate. Virginia is one of the states where the conf the debate over the Confederate mo monuments was was really hot, especially through the summer. And there were even nearby where I am, um, one was taken down uh, in in the country. Uh, Virginia is the state with the most, and and you want them removed those, these Confederate monuments. Will that be a priority for you if you're elected? Will it be one of the first things that you try to uh, uh, do when you're elected, if you're elected? Yes. So when I'm elected, because Erlina, we're going to we're going to claim it. And so when <laughs> I am elected, yes, I will ensure that we execute the law that I help pass, um, giving local control to localities to be able to determine what monuments they want to burn down. And the consensus throughout Virginia is that Confederate monuments no longer represent our values as Virginians, that we are moving forward and not back, that we're going to build a Commonwealth of Virginia that is open and we we'll celebrate our inclusiveness and our diversity. And so that's what this is really about. And so I'm ready to have these uncomfortable conversations about race and reckoning and how do we you know, build a Virginia where our future is definitely better than our past. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all for the uncomfortable conversations, because for me, I've been uncomfortable the whole time. And the people who are unwilling to have those conversations, they were comfortable. It was my discomfort that was happening. And so now I want us all to sort of sit in it and so, th so that we can move on and, and evolve as a country and hopefully as the state of Virginia as well. Jennifer Calfoy, thank you so much for being here. and Good luck in your race. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.